But these guys, I've got to get over. They're going to be my top heel team for a long run. So I need you and Roger to do the job tonight. Okay, no problem. Leo, as you know, refereed as well as was a booker. And he happened to referee our match. So it was one of those nights that your feet couldn't touch the floor. I mean, you couldn't have done anything wrong if you just set out to it, right? If you said, let's screw this match up, you couldn't have done it. Right. And we the crowd had was old, on fire that night. Yeah. We yeah. had that old Atlanta auditorium just rocking, man. Leo's at referee in our match. He comes around. He said, we're not wasting this match. We're bringing it back. Here's the new finish. Try that today, <laughs> right? That's right. We never missed a lick. We got the new finish in. And the team we were working with happened to be the first incarnation of the Andersons, Lars and Gene. Wow. And up to that point, they, you know, they had been working around the Southeast but had never had a push. And he said, it would be my heat, my top heels for a while. You realize the, well, you know, the run they yeah. had in Atlanta. Sure. How many years for God's sakes? <laughs> Lars, as as, Gene, Gene and Ole. I mean, the sure. whole thing. Sure. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, the greatest team of all time. Oh, right? As far as I'm concerned. Amazing. I, no, I, I wouldn't team. disagree at all. <laughs> just, just awesome. So you, you're in Georgia. Yeah. You ever see, so you're, you're working with the Andersons. So the, re, the 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 return match comes for the next week. Of course, you got you're doing TV. You got you got TV in uh, where you're you're doing it in Atlanta. Atlanta TV, uh, Columbus, of course. You know, for Fred, and uh, actually, by uh, they booked us out to uh, Dothan for a weekend, right? Friday night in Dothan, and then what was the Florida town they used to run on Saturday? Was it Panama City? No, no, it was closer to Dothan. It was clo closer. It was more uh, like Chris, Crestview. I think it was maybe it's Crestview and or it Mariana. Was, it wasn't far from Dothan anyway. Uh, so anyway, uh, so we you know we went to Louisiana first, and Kirby and I led in working with Jack Dalton and Frank Donnie Fargo and Frank Dalton as the Daltons, and it started. It got hot, and so the idea was for Hall to come in the cousins against the Daltons and uh, Johnny Long. You remember Johnny Long? Yes. Hell, he lived around you guys somewhere. Wasn't he from yeah. Chattanooga? Yes, he was. Yeah. Uh, he was Bob Dalton at the time. And so it was going to be the cousins against the Daltons. But something happened and Johnny left the territory. So it ended up being the cousins against Frank, Jack Dalton, and Bull Ramos. But we worked that territory for a long, you know. Now that was for Lee Fields. Yes, Louisiana. Yeah, base. We were based out of Baton Rouge, but so worked. Yeah, that was a, yeah, this is before Leo uh, Leroy McGurk or or Watts even got any involved over there, right? So I've got a picture. Let's see that that I did. That's Waddy Caldwell. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, I had it. No, this is Dennis. No, that's not Dennis either. <laughs> I, had it, I thought I had a picture of Dennis Hall. This is uh, this is you and Roger, right? That was, that picture was taken in our apartment in Atlanta, in 1966. Yeah. Wow. Well, now were you now you're blonde, right? Yep. You're both blonde. Wow. Yes. Well, Kirby Kirby was a natural blonde. I was when I was real small, four or five years old. But Kirby was a natural blonde. So when we decided to do the cousin thing, we got matching jackets, obviously, and stuff. And so uh, Dennis and I bleached our hair to match Roger. Wow. So I, I thought I had a picture of Dennis Hall, but I do not. He was an awesome wrestler. We don't hear about him that much, but he was no, he don't. was really, really a good wrestler. And I mean, he was a top draw for everybody from, like we're saying, in Florida, Georgia, uh, for Nick Goulas. I mean, he was a huge, huge draw uh, wherever he went. So you, you're in, you're working the Louisiana part for the fields. What happens where you well, from there? We, we worked the angle with the Daltons there, and then they wanted to move us over to Mobile for the summer run, right, in this, in, in 67. But then Rocky McGuire decided that he was going to want Roger and Dennis to work as a team. And uh, at the time, Garibaldi had Bobby Shane, his 17-year-old teenage sensation in Atlanta, and doing big business with him, right? So Rocky McGuire said, we're going to have a 17-year – uh, yeah, seventeen-year-old sensation too. I said, "Really? Who? You? Huh?" <laughs> well, I, I was twenty-six years old, right? And I thought, "You're out of your mind." But it worked. 
Sure. You know, it, it killed my social life, Rodney, <laughs> but, but it worked in the wrestling life. Well, I mean, a 17 year old kid can't go in a bar with Kirby and Hall, right? No. <laughs> I, so, have the police in there. Yeah, Talk exactly. Or somebody will answer my ID and then this jig will be up for sure. So, anyway, uh, working in a few couple months and they had a tag team tournament in Dothan. And so uh, Roger, uh, Eddie Graham, Sam Steamboat, Lester Welsh all flew up for, for the weekend, Friday and Saturday. So Sam and, uh, as you know, Sam and uh, Eddie were a big team in Florida yes. anyway. And I guess because we were both named Les, me, Leslie, him, Lester, they put us together as a team in the Dothan Tag Team Tournament thing. So we had a good match, you know, went on. So the next night in the Florida town, uh, Eddie and Lester come up to me and say, we've talked to Rocky and Lee and we want you to come to Tampa because you are going to be the NWA rookie of the year. Uh, and we'll present the trophy to you there and, and start you down there. Really? <laughs> I mean, nobody was any more shocked. I mean, that territory had such a great reputation, right? With top wrestlers too, all the time. Now, was I excited to go? Absolutely. But you know what? At that point in my career, I'd been in the business a little over oh, six years, a little more. Uh, if you'd have said, why don't you send a resume to Florida? I said, I'm probably not ready for that yet. But Eddie Graham said, you're coming to Florida. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> right? Really? <laughs> so, yeah, I, I went down there uh, and they, you know, rookie of the year thing. And then they brought Kirby in as my partner. But the, a part of the deal was uh, Matt Suda, before I got down there, had put the junior heavyweight strap back on Danny Hodge. So the deal was that if I could get by Matt Suda, then I got a shot at Hodge in the title. So we worked the, the deal with Hero, and then Hero teams up with Garvin, and then Roger comes in and, you know, the whole nine yards. And so, we had a, you know, it was a good run. Good run there. You know, but I'll tell you what, looking back at it, I as a, as you know, baby faces, you, you listen to the heel. We called everything in a ring, except sure. maybe the last two minutes, and we knew what the finish was gonna be. So uh I'm used to that. I, I mean, I don't have a problem. I'm working with all these great heels anyway, right? So it's an education every night. I I do believe that I would have done better in Florida if I personally had been more aggressive, right? Which I think Eddie expected from me, especially, you know, rookie of the year thing. But I'm still in the same mindset, you know, that I was, uh, if you're going to lead me, lead. Sure. Right? So I, I could have done better, I think. But as it was, it, you know, it was a great education. You got to work with a lot of, my. I'll tell you a story about my first night in the old uh, tamper. Uh, Tampa, uh, Fort Hesterly Armory. Um, I'm reading in a newspaper in, in my hotel room, uh, young rookie since, you know, blah, 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 wrestling Don Curtis. Whoa, wait a minute. I, I know the reputation. I know the man. I've seen him on picture on the cover of wrestling magazines. Also know what a temper he's got. If you screw up, right. I've heard those stories too. So, uh, and, wow. Les, you need to be up for this because it's your first night to wrestle in Tampa in front of the boss, and you're working with this guy who's a legend. Uh, so I'm sitting in a dressing room in Tampa on Tuesday night. I see Don come in from the far, you know, over on the far side. Stop, talk to Eddie, and Eddie kind of nods his head back toward me. So here comes Curtis, introduced himself, says, Anybody sitting there? I, no. Can I sit here? Sure. By the time we got ready to go to the ring, we were best friends. And re <laughs> seriously, he made me feel so comfortable. Like I'd known him all my life. Right. And we remained friends like that until the day he passed away, I, you know? Wow. Uh, and, uh, but yeah, so it, it was, uh, it was, you know, but that the first part of my career, the great thing was going to different territories, getting to work with top people, because every night was going to school. It was. Sure. And so how long did you stay in each place for each office? There was no set time. 
Uh, we stayed in Florida. See, that was the other thing too. Now, now that I'm out working and this is going to be full time, let's go every place, right? <laughs> you want to hit all the territories, or at least the ones you you've had in your mind all along. Uh, so I had been in Charlotte in '63, just a short period of time. So uh, Halls get ready to make a move. He he called and said he was going to Charlotte. So Kirby said, "Let's go to Charlotte." So. We left Tampa and went back in, into Charlotte in, in 67. And again, uh, George Becker put them together as a team, which is, I mean, we worked some six man. You know, the crazy thing, we went to Becker in 67 and told him, how about if we do this thing with baby faces, because that's, we were baby faced uh, threesome, uh, is, we decide who's going to be the two guys in a tag match at ringside. Oh, can't do that. <laughs> and we did, but the Freebirds did it uh, right. several years later. You, you, <laughs> they stole your idea. They stole. Well, I wish I could say, that. <laughs> but you know, it, it it was it was a good idea. It was just the wrong time, and they were talking sure. to the wrong Booker, right? But, right. But I had a, a longer run there uh, than Dennis and Roger actually. Uh, because they started fit me in as the third guy on baby the six man tags right with well with Becker and Weaver uh, with Jones and Nelson Royal it just depended right but it was great you know it got me uh, good shots and then at Christmas of '67 uh, was really the crowning glory I think for me at that particular time because we had worked a uh, an angle in the Charlotte Coliseum two months before where I had to go in and fill in for the referee. And uh, Frankie grabbed me at the end of the match. JC throws uh, the fire. They burned me, you know, rushed me out. We talked about this when I was on with you and Jacker a couple yeah, weeks ago. I stole this. There you go. There, there you go. That is shaved eyebrow, wet towel, and then Mercure Chrome, new skin, and there was some uh, Vic Sav that was actually colored dark, you know, which we put on there a little bit too. And then once a week, Mr. Crockett would say, come in, let me see. All right, baby, let's peel a little bit here. We got to start shrinking the this, this scab, right? So uh, anyway. And these, uh, and these are the guys that did it right here. That's that's him. I'll tell you what, what a hell of a team. Class, oh, yeah. class personified. Look at yes. those jackets. Look at him dressed in his, in his tuxedo. Yes. JC Dykes down at the bottom. And, and I also, learned so much from Frankie working with Frankie. My God, uh, but yeah, that that we blew this off on Christmas night, nineteen sixty seven. Whoops. Becker, Weaver, and myself against oh. JC and the Infernos, and and, uh, and I have that I believe right here. This is this is how stole from me as well. Uh, this is the the uh, the newspaper ad. Yep. Uh, six man tag: J.C. Dykes, Infernos against George Becker, Johnny Weaver, Les Thatcher. Hold Look that, at that there. Just a, hold that there, just a minute. Too. Sure. You, you know who P.Y. Chung is, right? That's that is Tojo Yamamoto. I didn't know that. And we've got Dad's old collection of uh, uh, what we did until an accident here flooded him but we had his old programs and he was in there and I, we kept taking this to dad i said well that looks like tojo yamamoto and he said that's because it is <laughs> yeah, it doesn't just look like him it is him but what yes. i was going to say is you got this card up here i think that frankie came myself and abe jacobs who is who just turned 93 day before yesterday wow yeah I think we are the only three got three guys on that card that are still above ground. Oh my goodness! Yeah. What a so so sold out. Oh yeah. Christmas night. Yeah. Uh, record house for Christmas. When I when I went to the building, we went to the building that night. I'm think I got my fingers crossed, my toes crossed. I was nervous because I knew if it didn't draw, I knew the other five guys in the match had work made events and drawn money before. And I'm thinking, if it doesn't draw, guess who is the scapegoat? Me, <laughs> right? So that was the deal. 
And but yeah, it uh, it was a record. Now, house. was this the only market they did it in, or they did they do it in other markets? It was the only well? market we did that particular match in. But now, after they did the the, it burned me, and we did the makeup and everything. For the next two weeks, I worked, I, or I didn't work anywhere, but I went to the towns that were you were run off the Charlotte television. And they'd have introduced me in the ring and tell why I wasn't working and let the people see this. Right. So we're, we're shooting for Christmas already. Right. We're sure. building on this thing. And the only physical contact between uh, the time they threw the fire and the Christmas night match is when I uh, did an interview on Charlotte TV, which would have, wow. This was when I was getting ready to start back in the ring, right? And the, the scab was still there, but it wasn't as prominent. And Bill, uh, Frankie and, and JC were in the ring. And uh, Bill Ward called me out to interview me, and we're standing with our back to the ring, right? And talking about hooking up with these guys. And Frankie comes and leans out and, like, hooks into the scab and starts to dig, right? And I start selling it. But that is the only physical... Com, uh, you know, confrontation that I had with any of those guys until Christmas night when we got there. Wow. But that, you know, Rodney, it's about building. It's about anticipation, right? Right. An old timer told me, I don't know, 55 years ago or whatever. I don't remember who, but he said, you know what, kid? If you go to a strip club, the girls don't come out naked and put their clothes back on. There's nothing to anticipate. <laughs> And I wish he were around today to tell these kids that I see on TV that instead of giving away the store in the first two minutes, take your time, you know, exactly. and milk it for everything you can get out of it. But yeah, so, uh, and I got to work uh, six mans with back. Well, it was kind of uh, like on the southern end of the territory, uh, I would work six mans. With, with, there were five teams with managers in the territory at that time, right? So it was going to happen. So I was I was doing the uh, six man thing with Becker. We were like on the south end of the territory for a run. Nelson Royal was doing it with him on the north uh, on the north end of the territory. So it was. I mean, it wasn't my. But you know, first of all, I come in and the, you know, if it were JC or Gary Hart or whoever it happened to be, you know, I'd be out there to keep an eye on the manager. And then of course the manager, I'd do something. He and I had never come had to come back with a six man, right? So it was a good right. run, very good. I was, I spent that time, I think, a little over a year and a half, a little over 18 months in Charlotte. Wow. Well, and, and you're, you're, tr you're, you're switching from one end to the other. Yeah. So you can right. stay, you can stay there very easy for all, for all that time. So tell us about how the uh, Inferno's, uh, um, from what I read in the in the uh, from the programs that we had, uh, JC said that it was physically impossible to throw fire. That men right. could never throw fire. So, and is that the way they approached it on television as well? We we don't know how that happened. We we would never uh, right. do such a thing, and well, and uh, it's physically impossible for men to draw to throw fire. And of course, nobody was uh, videoing. Well, there were no videotapes in, in 1967. Nobody was filming at the Coliseum, so it wasn't like we could throw up this film and we just take a look and here's the fire, right? Sure. It was there and it was gone. Nobody so you got, had any proof of it. Sure. So And then you've got – so all this proof is what they did for your face. And then the announcer, who had tremendous credibility, Bill Ward, right, was right. on television. He told, tells what this tells the story. You had George Becker telling the story. You had Johnny Weaver and then whoever else would come out. They would also tell the story to keep telling. And, of course, uh, J.C. Dykes. I don't know what these people are talking about. We would never yeah. do such a thing. It's physically impossible. <laughs> and then JC was doing a column in the Charlotte weekly program called likes and dislikes by JC Dykes. <laughs> so Gene Anderson, or Gene Anderson, Gene Gordon, who, the photographer. Yes. yes. Uh, who lived in Charlotte. And he did that little program at the time. And he, he called me, he said, I asked Mr. Crockett, if it would be all right for you to do a column to like combat what JC is saying, right? Building up for, for the, sh the show. Really? Yeah. Okay. So I came up with the name wrestlers. I view 
which I've used ever since you know, for any columns that I've done, right? So JC and I are, are shooting at each other in the program every week, right? And if you had a, that Christmas program, Jason, from J.C. Dykes and the, and the Mask Infernos, wishing all the fans and this and that. Yes, yes, I got, we got that Becker, one. Becker, Weaver, and Thatcher. Right. That's right. Beautiful, beautiful. It was he was uh, uh, Dykes was saying that Johnny Weaver, George Becker, and the Scots were all a part of the mafia, and they yeah. were out to get them. Right. I'll <laughs> tell you. Here's a, talk about a difference in the time. Is Frankie Kane told me this just a couple few years ago when we. Uh, reunion together that after we worked the angle there and worked a couple other places together, he had told Mr. Crockett, Jim Sr. He said, you know, Thatcher is your James Dean. And Mr. Crockett said, who's James Dean? Well, you don't know who James Dean is, Mr. Crockett? I, you never saw Rebel Without a Cause or so? Look at him. East of Eden. Look at him. He is. <laughs> and he said, no. He said, Thatcher, he said, well, I've never seen a movie. And so we went on from there. I thought.